Hello internet, welcome to the final part of my Vegas Vlogmas extravaganza. So far you've been tickled with delights such as what I got in Sephora, what it was like when we went to Area 51, what more could there possibly be? Coming up in the days before Christmas you'll see I'm going to be releasing some stuff about what I actually found at the conference what was of interest to me and I am passing that over to you. However, this video is more about the tourist things that we did. Although I've been here a number of times before, I didn't really think about the history of the city. I just thought, yeah, yeah, it's Vegas, you know, uh, famous for, you know, movies like The Hangover, things like that. It's just a stupid party town. And the only reason why I would come here was because of the conference. But actually, there's an awful lot of history behind it. Did you know that Vegas grew because it was a stop on the railroad between Los Angeles and Salt Lake City? And there was a bit of water here. So people thought, hmm, this seems reasonable. There's water here. It's kind of between these two places. Let's set up some tents here and, you know, sell stuff have a saloon, have some stuff for horses, I don't know, whatever they did in the Wild West. And since then, it's grown to be a city of over two million people, which is a lot. Of course, a lot of them are tourists. What I found super interesting was the way in which the mob and organized crime played a really huge part in the establishing of what we see as being modern Vegas today. So with that in mind, I took a trip to the Mob Museum. So here I am today at the Mob Museum. Yes, that's right, we are still in Vegas. Still, we are gonna be having a walk around this museum, which is all about how the mob organized crime was instrumental in the building of modern Vegas. So this Mob Museum used to be the courtroom and the post office. It was built in 1933, and at the time, it was the tallest building in Vegas. Due to the Hoover Dam project, which was built around the same time, uh, they both have the similar architectural style. A previous mayor of Vegas was a lawyer for the mobsters, and he convinced the city to put money into restoring this beautiful old building, which is why it looks as good as it does today. I think the really interesting thing is that all this really came about due to prohibition. So that took place in 1920 for a period of 13 years. And it was an amendment to the constitution which made it illegal to make and transport alcohol, but not to consume it. There were three ways in which you could obtain alcohol. One was to get a doctor's prescription. And back in those times they were charging, I think it was the equivalent of about $120 for a prescription for 10 days worth of alcohol. I'm not sure how they measured how much was 10 days worth. The second was for priests and rabbis. So the number of rabbis uh, apparently went up by loads during prohibition. And then the third was for scientific purposes. So these organized crime gangs who were previously doing things like prostitution, um, illegal gambling, all that stuff, they saw an opportunity, a gap in the market. And like all good entrepreneurs, they filled that gap in the market. And there were a few different ways that they obtained their alcohol. The first one was via moonshine. So they would pay people to have stills in their house and they would produce their moonshine over a period of seven days and then give that to the mobsters then to sell. The second way was rum runners. So they would obtain alcohol from the Bahamas or I don't know, from Scotland or somewhere like that, just somewhere offshore. And then they would sell it from a boat which was three miles off the coast, so not in American waters, it was in, in international waters. And people would take their boat out and sample the wares that were for sale out there and then bring it back to the mainland. And that was where the phrase, the real McCoy comes from, because there was a man called William McCoy um, who took pride in not further diluting or adulterating the alcohol that he was selling. The third way was by bootlegging, which basically means the same thing, but by smuggling it in um, over land rather than water. And there was a lot of money involved in selling this illegal alcohol to people during prohibition. Um, in fact, Al Capone uh, at one point was making $2 million per week, which back then, in the 1930s, I mean, it's an insane amount of money now, but back then it was 
a super insane amount of money. So they had all this money, these mobsters, and then when alcohol became legal again, there was another amendment, they, I guess, weren't too worried because at that point um, they'd already started to invest in other businesses to try and legitimise their money. So the early casinos were owned and operated by the mob. So until 1931, gambling was actually illegal in Las Vegas, but a lot of it was going on due to all the, uh, the stuff going on with the mobsters at that time. And then the state realized that it could actually be quite profitable for them to get involved. Now, when you go to Fremont Street, you'll see that above you, there's a whole bunch of lights and there's like a big canopy over it. In fact, we do have some footage of that later on in this video. After the war, there were a bunch of other new casinos which opened up around the same area, such as the Frontier. And then what we know as the Strip these days started um, back with a hotel and casino called the Flamingo, which has got a really interesting story. So there was a guy who was a gangster called Bugsy Siegel who used um, Mormon-owned banks to pour money into this... Um, this new enterprise. So yeah, when we were in the museum, we got to try some of their horrible moonshine, which they make on the premises. There were four different flavors. I cannot tell you the difference between the four. They were all equally vile. We also did this really cool crime lab thing where, I don't know, you, you're just kind of pretending to be uh, um, into forensics. And we also got to shoot some air guns, but I couldn't take any footage of that, so sorry. Um, we got to see inside the old courtroom. You can imagine people being sentenced in there. Or found not guilty, who knows? Although I suspect probably a lot of them were found guilty. It's quite interesting to see how Prohibition was responsible for the formation of the organised crime units. I guess that's an argument to say that prohibiting something doesn't really work. We got to dress up and wear silly hats. That was fun. We saw some contraband. There was a Hermes Birkin in there, which I believe was alligator skin. I have no idea if it was real or not. So if you're ever in Vegas and you fancy doing something slightly cultural, I would heartily recommend a visit there. It was brilliant. The building's located just outside the Fremont Street area, which is where a lot of the older casinos are. We didn't really spend too much time there, just had a quick walk around. It's a bit sketchy. So the last thing that we did for your delectation was go in a helicopter. I have been in a helicopter before. I went to the Grand Canyon about 10 years ago. I will probably do it again next time we come back in one year's time. The whole trip in the helicopter, I have put on Instagram TV and narrated the whole thing. If you want to learn more about Vegas, then please head on over to there. And if you're not following me on Instagram, then why not? It's not out yet though, guys. It will be out maybe in about, I don't know, three or four days when I've got time to do it. If I don't see you before then, have a good Christmas. I'll see you later. So yeah, as you can see, we're just coming up to the strip here, uh, which is around 4.2 miles in length and bordered by two towns called Paradise and Winchester, which for some reason I found pretty funny. Win, which is where I, I was staying, hello. They're building another uh, resort like the Wynn and Encore, but over the road. This is of course surrounding Trump Towers. You can just see where the construction is occurring there and it's worth noting of course that Steve Wynn and Donald Trump famously can't stand each other and uh, Steve Wynn actually blocked Donald Trump from being able to get a gambling license for his hotel so it's the only big place in Vegas which is literally just a hotel Okay, so we're just coming up to do a very close flyby of the stratosphere. It's the only strip hotel actually located within the city of Las Vegas. You'd be interested to know. And it's also the tallest structure in Las Vegas and the state of Nevada. 
they have recently installed some new rides at the top which I do not think I would go on if you paid me a million dollars. Woo! Close up and personal. <laughs>